If you're a Thrivecart and Thrive Apprentice user and you use subscriptions, whether it be for a membership or an annual or monthly course or community, you might have run into the question or the issue, depending on how you look at it, for what happens if somebody cancels? Now, when I say cancel, I mean whether you've gone in manually like this into their account and you've canceled their subscription manually, or they can go into the customer hub, access their subscription and cancel it themselves. Just based on how Thrivecart has built the integration with Thrive Apprentice and Stripe and PayPal, by default, when a subscription is canceled, that's it. All the payments stop, the subscription is canceled in Stripe or PayPal, etc., and that's it, that's the end. And when that happens, in most cases, Thrivecart's going to tell Thrive Apprentice, that's it, wipe them out, take away their access, no more. I'm going to show you how you can still use Thrivecart and Thrive Apprentice, but instead of wiping out that access right when a subscription is canceled, have it wait until the end of the billing period before a message is sent to Thrive Apprentice to wipe out their access. So let's jump right in and get started. We're in Thrivecart. Now, I'm gonna set up a test product here just so we can go through this. Let's pretend I have a membership here, and by default, under Fulfillment, you'll have set that you want to add them to your membership site, and in this case, we'll choose Thrive Apprentice. Now, in most cases, people check this button right here to revoke access when the customer cancels or refunds. Well, this is pretty much the culprit for how the trigger gets sent immediately to Thrive Apprentice. By checking this box, Thrivecart does its thing, and there's no way to change Thrivecart from doing its thing. Thrivecart is going to cancel that subscription immediately at Stripe or PayPal. So what you want to do is uncheck this box. Now, Stripe's still gonna do its thing, but it's not going to tell Thrive Apprentice, hey, I canceled the subscription, wipe out their access. So instead, we're going to set up a middleman. We're going to set up a step that basically gets a signal from Thrivecart that the subscriber has canceled, but it's going to look at one specific little date, and that's the end of their billing period before that middleman sends a note to Thrive Apprentice. For our middleman, we're going to use Zapier. Now, I know a lot of you use the alternatives to Zapier, like Integrately, Integromat, and so on. That's fine, I'm gonna use Zapier because it's better, and I like it better, and this is what I use, but you can adapt, and hopefully those other tools are as good as Zapier, and you can adapt this to make it hopefully work in one of those platforms instead. But moving forward, this will use Zapier. So let's think about the flow really quickly. A user or you cancel their subscription. The trigger is going to come from Thrivecart that the subscription was canceled. So in our Zap, let's look for Thrivecart. Choose Thrivecart. And now we need to choose our event, which is, like I said, subscription or recurring payment is canceled. Click Continue. Choose your account. And then click Continue. If you have a specific use case, you probably know what it is. You can fill out these optional fields. We're not going to, so I'm gonna click Continue and we're going to test our trigger to look for a cancellation that's already happened. If you don't have a cancellation yet, go ahead and run a test on your product, do a checkout in test mode, and then cancel your subscription manually just so that you have some data to work with. Okay, so we found our cancellation data and we clicked continue. So that's the trigger, somebody canceled. Okay, so what happens next? We need an action. So to make this work, there's two paths we can take. The easiest path is the delay pause actions for a certain amount of time. But here's the caveat. In Zapier, delays only work for a maximum of 30 days or one month. So if you have a monthly payment, this works for you. You can simply click on delay. However, if you're on an annual subscription and let's say somebody cancels the day after they buy, just so they don't forget, what's going to happen for the remaining 11 months and 29 days or so? Well, we need to do it a different way. So I'm gonna show you both methods, the delay method for monthly subscriptions, and the other method for much longer delays. By default, you can click on delay, and we need to choose an event. Our event is going to be delay until, and this is until a specific time, and this is going to be the end of the billing cycle. Click continue. Now, we need to enter the time that we're going to delay to. Thankfully, when we click into this field, we're going to pull up all of the data sent to us by Thrivecart, and we're going to search for billing. You can see here, I've searched for billing, and if I look for billing period end date, you can see in this test data, the billing period end date is 9-24-2022. We're going to choose that as our delayed until date and time. You can leave the default option for how they handle dates in the past. We're moving forward on this one, not in the past, and we're going to click continue. 
you can go ahead and skip the test. You don't want to wait that long. So let's really quickly recap. They canceled in Thrivecart or we canceled for them. It sent the trigger to Zapier that they canceled. Zapier then set up a delay until a specific date and time. Now let's pretend that, that date and time was only within a 30 day window, because remember, if it's greater than a 30 day window, we need to look at another method. Proceeding as if this is within a 30 day window, let's set up the next step, which is, well, we have to let Thrive Apprentice know time's up, cut them off. Thankfully, we have Thrive Automator, which works beautifully with webhooks and Thrive Apprentice. So I'm going to choose webhooks by Zapier, and I'm going to choose an event. We're going to choose post, and then click continue. And now we need our URL. So let's hop over to our website, go into Thrive Automator, and let's create a new automation. For our trigger, we're going to search for incoming webhook, and it's given us a URL. Awesome. We're going to click the copy button to copy this URL, and we're going to go back to Zapier. Inside of Zapier, paste in the URL and payload type. You can leave this on form, that's fine. Now here's our data. We're going to send an email. In the data field, we're going to type in email and in the insert text or insert data, we're going to click into this field and pull the email from Thrivecart. So to do that, we click into this field, we find the recurring payments canceled in Thrivecart, drop this down and select our customer's email field. There we go, we have our email field in. We don't need to wrap it in an array. We don't need to do anything else here. We can simply proceed to the next step. When ready, go ahead and click continue. Now when it's time to test, you're going to want to send this, but hold off just one second, pop back over to Thrive Automator and click the listen button, and then come back into Zapier and test our action. Okay, so when the test is done, the countdown timers disappeared and you're left with email and text. We need to change this text to email. And to do that, we're going to go to dynamic mapping and find email. Once you have email and email, I know a little bit confusing, we're going to click done. Now we need to add another action. In this case, we're going to choose WordPress, find or create a user. In this case, we're finding a user that matches the email that came in. Go ahead and just click done because it's matching by their email. We don't need anything else. We're not creating a user. They already exist. Now we're going to add another action and this is going to be an apprentice action and we're going to remove access from a product. And in our case, we're removing them from our membership. So I'll go ahead and choose Combology Pro in this case and then click done. And in our case, our simple automation is done. Let's quickly walk through this here. So Zapier sent a webhook. Thrive Automator caught that incoming webhook and said, well, what do I do with this? Well, I've got an email that came in. I'm gonna find a user. It's gonna find it by the email by default because that's how it works. Now it's going to say, okay, I found that email. What do I do? Well, we're going to remove access from a product because they canceled. And that is going to be our membership or whatever the subscription was for. So we've canceled their membership. We're gonna go ahead and set this to active and save and finish. So if you're working in monthly increments or time less than 30 days, that's it. That's all you need to do. But I think in most cases, a lot of us are using annual, quarterly, or biannual subscriptions. So we're going to need to add a couple of other steps to this. Now, thankfully, everything on the Thrive Automator side, well, that's exactly the same. We can just kind of leave that alone. But we need to make a couple of tweaks inside of Zapier. So let's take a look at how we do that. So let's go back into Zapier and reset ourselves back to this point where a user or we have canceled a recurring payment inside of Thrivecart. So what happens now? For our first action, Zapier actually has a full tutorial on this. They recommend in a use case like this where our time is greater than 30 days, you use the Google Calendar integration and it's actually really easy. I've gone ahead and inside of my Google Calendar account, I've just created a new calendar and I called it subscription cancel zaps. You can call it whatever you want. To create that calendar, if you're not familiar, on the left-hand side where it says other calendars, just simply click the plus button, click create new calendar, give your calendar a name and click create calendar. Now that our calendar is created, we can connect Zapier to our Google Calendar account. That's super easy. You just click on back on our Zap, Google Calendar as our action. And yep, there it is, Google Calendar. And then choose an event that happens. We want to create an event and we're going to create a detailed event. Now, by the way, if you haven't integrated your Google Calendar, you just click on here and just log in with your Google account and it'll give you access. It's totally easy to do, it's like two clicks. So like I said, we're gonna create that detailed event and click continue. Choose your account. For us, we're choosing our Google Calendar account that we connected, clicking continue. 
and we're going to choose the calendar. There we go. I've got subscription cancels apps. That's just what I named my calendar. Now where it says summary, we're going to put in some information that will create the event. This is like when you add an event to your Google Calendar. Now I'd like to put the name of the customer here inside of the summary as well. I can actually add dynamic information from Thrivecart directly into the Zap. So I've gone ahead and I've clicked in and I've clicked on the customer's name. So it's going to say subscription cancel colon and then the name of the customer. Next we have the description and this is where I recommend you put in the customer's email address. And the reason we're putting it in the description is because we need a field that Zapier can reference in the future for sending that data through a webhook to Thrive Apprentice. So inside of our description, we'll just click in here and we'll go ahead and click on the customer's email as our description and that'll work just fine. Next, I need to do the start and end time. For the start and end time, I'm going to click into here and I'm going to do a search for billing. And now you'll see that we have a billing period end date. That's what I want to choose for the start time and I want to choose the same time for the end date. Now I have my event start and end time as the billing period end date. And then you can go ahead and click continue. You can go ahead and run a test on your zap. That's just going to push your test data or your pre-existing cancellation that you're testing with. It's going to send that data into your Google Calendar and you're going to see that event just to make sure that all of it worked. So that's it for this step of the cancellation. We've essentially triggered when a cancel happens. What are we going to do? We're going to add an event to our cancellation calendar. Terrific. You can go ahead and publish this if you want. Now we need to make another zap. Now we need to set up a new trigger based off of a Google Calendar. That's what we had just set up previously. We're going to trigger this based off of event start and we're going to then click continue. Choose our same account, click continue. Now we need to choose our calendar and we need to choose how many minutes before the start of this event. Now the start of the event, right, is just the end of billing cycle, that exact time when their billing time runs out. Now you have to pay attention here for starter and free plans of Zapier. This should be 16 minutes or more. Uh, and that's because there is a delay on some of these things on how they run. So I recommend you set this at about 20 or 30 minutes. We'll choose 30 minutes before it runs. And then we're going to search for a term that is in all of our our cancellation calendar events. And for us, we put subscription canceled or subscription cancel, uh, we'll just search for that. It's like a keyword. It's basically going to look for any event in your calendar that says subscription cancel. And remember ours was subscription cancel. We put a colon and then the full name of our customer who canceled. So we'll just search for this, it'll find it. We can go ahead and at this point click continue. And you can go ahead and click test trigger and then click continue. And the next step here is we have to say, okay, after this event starts, what do we do? This is the exact same steps that we walked through when we set up the previous Zap for time periods less than a month. So we're going to set up a webhook by Zapier and we're going to choose our event, which will be to post. And then we're going to click continue. The URL, this is exactly what we had in Thrive Automator. So let's jump back there and get that information. I'm just going to use the same automation because it functions exactly the same. I'm just going to copy my webhook here. I'm going to paste in the URL for uh, that webhook. The payload type is form, that's totally fine. And here we're going to choose email. And we're just gonna type in email rather. And for our data, we're going to insert the data that we dynamically put into our calendar event. You'll remember we chose the description box as the place where we were going to put our customer's email address that we're going to use to find in Thrive Apprentice. So we're going to click on this and select that email. All right, there it is. It found it in the description, perfectly fine. And the rest of this, we're just going to leave completely blank and click continue. That's everything that we need to do on the Zapier side. Let's just do a quick wrap up in the Thrive Automator side to recap. So again, we have our webhook URL that we copied and pasted in. We have our email. We just typed the word email because that's the key that we used, basically saying the data that we're sending over, we're calling it email. Under the right-hand column here, we chose dynamic mapping email. That's how we are mapping it to the email of the account dynamically. And then click done. And then we are going to, again, find a user. That's basically saying, we just got an email address. Who does it belong to? Ah, there it is, it's that user. So we have that find step. You don't need to put anything in here, just click done. And then 
we need to do this, which is, well, what do we do with that data we just got? We got someone's email, we matched it to an account. What do we do? We remove access from the product. So here, we're just going to remove it from the product that the subscription was for and click done and then save and finish. I know that was kind of complicated. There were quite a few steps to walk through, but really just to recap here, if your subscription is for less than 30 days, meaning you have like a monthly subscription to a product, you can just use Zapier's delay until function. If it's greater than 30 days, meaning you have an annual subscription or even a, a biannual or quarterly, you're going to want to use that Google Calendar integration. Now, this isn't a hack. This is actually what Zapier recommends you do for delays greater than a month. Now, I wish that Thrivecart would create a built-in function that allows you to send that cancellation at the end of the billing period. But to be honest with you, I've been following their Facebook group now since 2008. What is that? Almost five years. And that's been a feature that's been coming since then. So I don't really have a lot of hope that it's going to come pretty soon. So this is likely the best way we're going to handle this. Now, alternatively, Thrive Apprentice and May in the future, and you might be watching this and that might be the case, um, in which case I'll, of course, post another video. But I hope also that Thrive Apprentice on their end could handle this and can say, hey, we just got a cancellation notice from Thrivecart. Is the billing period still in the future? If yes, hold off canceling until that billing period. Essentially, Thrive Apprentice could take over uh, doing what we're doing inside of the zaps. In fact, it'd be a terrific thing to do inside of Thrive Automator. So uh, Thrive team, if you're watching this, can we get that feature built into Thrive? Because Thrivecart's sure not doing it, and it really hurts us on the subscription side. Well, I hope you found that useful. If you're a subscription user, I know it's definitely a feature that you're going to want to consider implementing. If you have any other questions about Thrivecart and Thrive Apprentice and connecting those two tools together, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I do a lot of content related to Thrive Apprentice and Thrivecart, but that's it for this video. I'm Doug from Convology and I'll see you hopefully in the next one.